the Chinese, they've been dominant, the dominant power for not just centuries, but for millennia. So the last two centuries or so, when they're economically dipped and seen as inferiors by, by Westerners, that for them, given their 5,000 year history, is a glitch. It's a historical glitch. So deep down in the Chinese mentality is the push to get back, quote, where we belong, speaking of the Chinese. So they, they now have this tremendous momentum. And the, the potential of the Chinese is phenomenal. They're, what, 1.3 billion people? And four times you know, more of America's population. Chinese are smarter than us, Westerners. Their average IQ is 105, whereas ours is, is 100. So they have the potential. We, I, I, you know, I, one of the reasons why I lived so long in China was I was hoping to see China democratize. As, you know, after 89, you know, Tiananmen Square massacre and so on, you know, there's, there was a push then to democratize China. Well, that didn't happen. In fact, Xi Jinping, the current president, is turned into another Mao, Mao Zedong, another dictator, another emperor. So I, I don't know how long it'll be before China does democratize. But at the moment, there's a tremendous rivalry, growing rivalry between the US and China. And the Americans hate the Chinese government. I mean, I personally hate the Chinese government because it, it has, what, a thousand or so Lao Gai, that's Chinese for Stalin's gulags, in other words, your um, slave labor camps for political prisoners, so over a thousand, a couple of million political prisoners. You, you've probably heard of the concept of live organ harvesting. You, you need a spare, you need a kidney, you need another kidney. So go to the Chinese black market and they will sell you a kidney. But where do they get it from? Well, they take a living political prisoner, kill him, extract the kidney and sell it to you. I mean, a government that does that, they're beyond the pale. So, so Western governments, West, Westerners, despise the Chinese government. But it's on the rise. The, I mean, I lived, I lived there in, in one year. In the teens, early teens, I saw the number of calves on the road and where I was living in one year double. In one year. It was just amazing. So China's really on, on the rise and growing, and potentially with their superior intelligence and vast population. Once they eventually democratize, they become like Taiwan. I mean, imagine a giant Taiwan. That, yeah, that, 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 that's, what, that's what I see coming. Once they democratize and, and free up their minds, because at the moment, China is intellectually sterile. I don't, I don't know if you're aware, but China, have a guess how many science Nobel Prizes China has won today? It's pathetic. So, um, you know, once, once they free up and become as creative as the Taiwanese, who are very creative, then uh, China's just going to just roar ahead. But at the moment, uh, the West the West hates China. The China hates the West because what the West did to China in the 19th century, particularly, it we really brutal and carved up the country and so forth. So there's a sense of revenge. So if I were Minister of Defense in the U.S., I would not allow the Chinese my equivalent yeah. Minister of Defense in China to get ahead of me in terms of AI investment in intelligent weapon systems, uh, AI robots, and so forth. And, and, and of course, a similar logic applies the other, in the other direction. If I were a Minister of Defense in China, I wouldn't allow my counterpart in America to get ahead of me. So there will be no think stopping. It, do you think China is behind the West right now for AI? I mean, you live there. They're not creative. Uh, they're, they're great copiers. The, the Japs as well. I, I lived eight years in Japan in the 90s and 12 years in China in the zeros and tens or the teens. So the education system is rote memorization. So it doesn't encourage creativity. 
Whereas the Taiwanese, I mean, genetically the same people, they're still Chinese, right? They are very creative, dynamic, and you know, they're just producing all kinds of wonderful new creative stuff. So the, the potential is there for China to be like that. But at the moment, it's just a brutal dictatorship. Uh, right. I, I'm not sure if I can say this in Britain. Like a couple of weeks ago, I was on um, coast to coast in America. Uh, George Noring, uh, have that program? I've, I've heard coast of it. Coast to coast. Yeah, what did you say? Anyway, well, I described China, quote, as a political shithole. And he freaked out. <laughs> Sorry, you can't say that. <laughs> and why did you say that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it, yeah, it's been a while since. I, I, I lived in the UK in the 70s, yeah, long enough to take up to British citizenship, so I'm dual. But, yeah, that's a long time ago. Anyway, so the uh, the political momentum uh, will, will not stop because of the rivalry over the next couple of decades as China inevitably uh, passes the US just in, in like the Chinese government now has a program that they're, they're, they're targeting certain industries and research areas like you know biotech and AI and various other things and they, they aim they're pouring billions of uh, yuan RMB in, into these areas to not just catch up, but to, but to dominate. And uh, they'll be able to uh, give really good salaries to, to foreigners that are uh, uh, got another little story there if you want to hear it. Uh, I got politically fired. I actually got fired in uh, 2010. I was trying to persuade the president of my university to make the city that we were living in, that, that's Xiam, that's a little little north on the coast of from Hong Kong, so so in that sort of part of the, the world. And he was quite warming to the idea of making the city we were both living in, the university was University of Xiam, or Xiamen University, to, to make it the brain building center of China. Because uh, yeah, there, was, there was a brain building group in, at the university and, and uh, I'd invited Ben Gersel to, to come and be a professor there at the time and so on. <clears throat> and that, so, that, that uh, was all chronicled in the movie Singularity or Bust. That was right around that time. Right. Yeah. Right, right. In, in the zeros. One of, yeah, it was 09, was, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, um, so the person I was sort of discussing this, making uh, the city we lived in, the, the the AI brain building center and you know, telling him that uh, brain building would become what the, the, the richest industry uh, within a decade or so. So he really bought that. He's, he's an economics uh, graduate, that was his background. So he really understood all that. And then, uh, so he's quite warming to the idea. And then I sort of mentioned, we're talking about uh, recruitment of talent, <clears throat> and so I was telling you about you know Ben, you know this, you know, this Ben Gertzel, he's genius, right? Inside he's one, eight, six, <laughs> I don't know, and and others, and then I sort of casually mentioned to this president, saying, well, yeah, but there might be a bit of a problem with recruitment with the Western professors and researchers because they know about Mao, oh, faux pas. Big time. So you can, you can imagine what happened. So he says, what do you mean? I said, well, they know that Mao killed about 80 million Chinese. Honey. Now, when you're president of a major university in China, you have to be CCP, Chinese Communist Party. Because um, they have two kinds of deans in, in Chinese universities. You have the academic dean, and the political dean. And typically, the political dean is about 20 IQ points dumber than the academic dean. But the political dean has the power. That, so they hire and fire. And they keep the academic deans and all the professors in check, in line. You know, you're not allowed to speak out. So the next thing I learned, my contract's not renewed. And he's saying, you broke the law. Screw it. So one of the, um, I think China 
just, just, you know, it, it has a higher average intelligence. It has huge population. It has a lot of energy. Uh, but one thing that might hold it back is it will be incapable of attracting foreign talent. Okay. And g- given given that China has won a pathetic two two science Nobel prizes, they they have a huge problem. But they're pouring money into AI now. They're they're great copyists. I mean, they're smart. Right? They, they can read the research papers coming out of the West. And so they're, they're quick on the mark that way. And because there's so many of them, maybe they will get ahead. And I, I know a lot of Western people are worried about this. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true. And you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's gonna be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm going to tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you going to do? What's the choice that you're going to make?